afternoon. My name is David Knox, January 7th, 2024 of this new year. My name is David Knox and I have MSA, multiple system atrophy. Following up on my last video of the bad news I had that the uh, clinical trial I was into would actually do more harm than good for me in the stage of my progression with MSA, I thought it interesting to give you an update on what I found with their test and also explain a little bit about what, what's going on. So the MSAP Parkinsonism and MSAC cerebellar are, are quite a bit different. They are they, they look the same here and there, but they but they are very different. But those that have MSAC, most of the issues they have the atrophy and you know, the absolutely in the back of the head here in the, in the cerebellum region, that big lump in the back of your head. MSAP, most of those issues you're having are in the pudiment and the caudate, which is right smack dab middle in the brain. So. You know, there's a little bit difference in how these, these things go on. And I wanted to show you, for instance, that the, my original death scan from a year and a half ago, uh, yeah, I think that's fair. So just over a year, not even a year and a half, had showed that I had absent radio tracer activity in my pudiment, in just my pudiment. So, Again, with MSAP, you know, we start to see the Pudiman and the Caldate right next to each other having issues. And the one thing that we did at the clinical trial was more testing, you know, their own types of tests, because they, you know, the government funded and research and stuff like that, they have to do a certain tests a certain way. So we re redid these tests. And you can see here on my second test, it says, again, positive result. They're, a they're able to get, to get rid of a central tremor as one of these possible causes, right? Because you never clearly know until, until death, you know, when you do an autopsy on the brain, if it's actually MSA. Um, but you see here, it says that the um, the basal ganglia is marked to decrease radio, radio, tracer, radio tracer activity in the right putamen and moderate re reduction in the left putamen. So, you know, these tests see a little bit different things. I'm sure there's lots of things that go into how much they can see in medicine, things like that. But now we also see that the, the call date has a moderate reduction. So in the course of a year, just over a year, both my pudiments have issues, right? And now my call date is one of the two issues on my call date. One of the two sides of my call date is starting to have issues as well. I'm not having radio trace activity, not synaptic responses, you know, those connections to and from other parts of the body. So I, I wanted to show what that is. And we, we show, I had a video about this before, about the Pudiman and, and the Caldi and, and the brain in general in three-dimensional. You can see I highlighted here in uh, red ovals where the Pudiman is. And really the Caldi is that when you look on the MRI or the DAT scans and PET scans, it looks like a, like a, a semicolon, a comma, sort of speaking. And that's really from above, that's really what that Caldi looks like. So it does wind around the, uh, the whole nucleus called the whole area right there with different types of material. But the Pudiman and the, the Caldi are the main issues that we have with MSAP, right? Obviously, you can see one thing we're talking about here is, is the thalamus. So we'll, we'll get to that. But, you know, the Pudiman and the Caldi that we have issues with MSAP are these two nuclei. There in the, it's called the, the basal ganglia, right? It's just a group of structures in the brain that controls motor control and, and higher level learning. They have some similar functions in what they do, but, but they, they go in different directions. So for example, the Pudiman controls, one of the things the Pudiman controls is, is motor control. As you, you can probably see with my speaking and things like that, even some jittering, if you can see on camera, that the Pudiman plays a critical role in receiving stimulus from the cerebral cortex. What's the cerebral cortex? Well. It's the brain you think of when you, when you see a picture of a brain. It's everything on the outside that you can really see, except the cerebellum in the back. It's, it's everything else that you typically think of as the brain. And it's responsible for receiving signals from the cerebral cortex. So if I touch something, signals go up to the cerebral cortex, the brain, and then it sends it to something called a thalamus. Thalamus. The thalamus is, says, tells the brain where to send these signals to interpret them how much or how little to do things, right? To react or not to react. It's involved in the execution coordination of these involuntary movements, including initiating and modulating speed, force, and direction of movements. 
I could run to this day, but it's going to end. It's going to start off horribly and end even worse because my brain is no longer able to modulate the initiating of the moving the feet in the right, keeping my feet and legs and arms and body in sync to not fall over on my face. So that's one of the primary functions of the Poodman. Another one that the Poodman is responsible for is procedural learning, right? It's involved in, which basically what we're talking about is acquisition and execution of motor skills or habits, right? So it facilitates the creation or formation and the retrieval, the memory, right? The calling up information of motor memories, allowing for autonomic, automatic, sorry, inefficient performance of these learned tasks, typing, golf, basketball, you know, pulling a, a lawnmower, or a ripcord on a parachute, these things like that, playing an instrument, and things like driving a car. These things you learn, right? How, once you learn to ride a bicycle, you don't lose the ability to, to learn to, to ride, ride that bicycle. You know, something traumatic has to happen, but you've learned it, and the next time you get to a bike, you, you may be rusty, but you're still able to recreate the uh, motor skills that you had in your in your past to ride that bike perfectly fine. You know, that's, that's something else that, that the Poodman does, right? Another thing that the Poodman is responsible for is gating of movements. Now, this is very specific movements relating to motor cortex and other motor-related areas. So it assists in suppression or suppressing of these unwanted, inappropriate movements while allowing the execution of appropriate actions. A good example is I talk about these tremors and spasms. These spasms and tremors happen at the wrong time. We drop our food. You'll see me on videos and Zoom calls and all these podcasts. You'll see me on I'm spasming. I'm doing these things that is, is, are not good to the overall movement of my body or the task I'm trying to do. They suppress the activity that's not supposed to be there. So, you know, it's, it's like being a flopping fish out of water. <laughs> it's literally what happens if you can't suppress these things. And you can kind of imagine how worse it gets for people. If you can't suppress things and you're shaking, you know, like the tremors and things, your, your hands and feet and toes and body, center of gravity, they don't go where they're supposed to. And you, these, it makes it difficult to do things, let alone not fall on trip and kill yourself. One of the more curious items that it does, the Poodman, is rewards. So it's, it's very involved in processing of rewards and reinforcement of learning. Right, so the Poodman receives inputs from, they call it VTA, the ventral tegmental area, and projects onto the prefrontal cortex the evaluation and integration of rewarding stimulus, stimulus, stimuli, plural, right? By the Poodman having dysfunction in this area, the reward circuitry has been associated with addiction and impulse controls, impulse control disorders, right? This is one of the hardest things to realize is Somebody with MSA is usually, once they get going with this disease, grouchy, mean, yelling at people, yelling at the wife, the caregivers, the kids, Jesus, God, everyone. And, you know, you literally, I want a, I want a T-bone steak. You brought me the perfect T-bone steak, and I'm not happy. The reward process in the mind is deficient when the Putman goes. We don't capture rewards at the same, at the same level. Satisfaction would be another word. We don't capture the rewards and satisfaction that we normally would. Going to a trip to Disney World or a cruise. Like, oh, it was the most fulfilling moment with my wife and kids. And, but with, with MSA, we may not even think that. We, we may think that it was a waste of time, a horrible experience, whatever, because our Puderman is dysfunctional. It's, it's not working. Interesting things with this. The call date. The second part of MSAP that is really affected primarily, and then with MS, MSAC mixes in, but the second part of that would, would be motor planning. The call date is intricately involved in motor planning, which refers in this case to the process of selecting and organizing the sequence of movements required to perform a specific action. If you get MSA, you are not being a defensive back for an NFL team. I have to line up in front of somebody and watch his movements and his movements are going to dictate where I go on my feet. My brain says, go do this, do this, call up these actions, pass history, but, but I need to go here to stop this guy. And the actions that, that are involuntary are automatic. They don't happen with MSA. So, you know, that, that, that's one of the biggest things I, I talk about in my videos of me walking. The failure of the motor planning, the feet got to go here in very precise locations going down steps. 
or grabbing handrails or typing. And when you have MSA, they don't happen like that. You want them to go, I want to go from here to here perfectly. But with MSA, MSA there's times it's going to go from here to here or here. It's not going to go where you want to, resulting in some catastrophic circumstances from some time. So that's the other thing, right? The organization of sequence of movements. It's called it as well. Organization of the sequence of movements. You know what happens if you, you know, you you, you put the car in park on like while you're driving 55 miles per hour, but before you stop, you blow the engine or transmission. That sequence in life is everything to, to, to us and to keep us fluidly living and doing things properly. And again, when that happens, you know, that's the prefrontal cortex up here. When, when, it, when it starts to deteriorate, those signals don't talk from the prefrontal cortex to the, to the call date. Steps, steps get skipped and could be catastrophic. And eventually they will be with MSA. Another thing is the call date flexibility. So what we're talking about here is the ability to adapt and switch between different tasks and mental sets, right? It helps in shifting attention, inhibiting irrelevant information, and updating working memory representations, all of which are crucial for adaptive behavior. People that are great at multitasking, this is one of the reason, one of the reasons why. You know, I, I need to clean my gutters. I need a ladder, I need a solid surface, you know, no, no debris, it's nice and safe, a good angle, you know, certain certain steps. Ignoring Things I don't, I don't I don't need to worry about the cars on the street behind me or the bird above me, right? Ignoring things that are relevant so you can focus on the, the, the task at hand, and and that's something that's really hard is you know the if you can't inhibit irrelevant information, then everything around you becomes pertinent. Everything plays a role. You become overwhelmed by all the stimuli, all the stimulus around you. It feels like the world is crashing down on you. You can't do anything right. Also, call it also the working memory. The call date is very involved in working memory processes, which are involved with temporary storage and manipulation of information required for ongoing tasks. So, the call date participates in the maintenance and retrieval of task relevant information, allowing goal directed behavior and problem solving. Go to work. I need to create a spreadsheet with all the clinical trials for MSA a certain format, certain presentation, put on a PowerPoint and present it professionally, right? Not being able to draw this, the storage of information of how to even work Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word and, and how to manipulate data inside of it, how, how to change things, retrieval of task relevant information, right? How, how to do a process from A to Z, how to flush a toilet, how to install a new razor blade on a razor. You know, these, these are things that are very cumbersome if you can't do them. And, and that's hard because problem solving goes off the window with MSA, right? You don't really ask many people at MSA, hey, can you help me figure something out? Because you hear a lot of people talk about brain fog with MSA. The brain fog, not being all there. Well, yeah. <laughs> to call date as part of your working memory. And you, it's not that we're dumb or stupid or lost our mind, right? It's not that, it's just that we can't recall the history of what you're talking about and how to do things. It, it is literally a fog of war when it comes to MSA. And lastly, one of the items that we're talking about for call date is something called associative learning. So the call date is essential for associative learning, what we're talking about is a context of stimulus response associations. So it helps in forming and updating associations between stimulus and the appropriate motor or cognitive kind of responses. I touch the stove, my, my response would be to pull my hand back immediately. It's burning, it's hurting, right? If you don't have this, if you have this dysfunction in the call date, you don't draw these correlations with each other. Right? I walk down the stairs down, every day up downstairs and I feel these sensations, the stimulus in my legs that says I'm going to collapse and fall and I better stop or do something about it. And I do. My call date has just begun to have issues. Right, So I, I, guess I still understand what I'm doing. But when you see people keep falling, when you see people with MSA, those of us with MSA keep falling and falling and falling over the same repetitive task, you're like, 
you're an idiot. Why do you keep doing this? You know you're going to fall. We don't make the connection based on past experiences about the stimulus what's going to happen because our call date is being impacted, right? This function in a call date also uh, is implicated by researchers in the medical field in obsessive compulsive disorder. I've had that for years. And Tourette's syndrome, right, which involves maladaptive associated learning, right? Tourette's syndrome is, is very bad. So, in conclusion, you know, the, the pudiment and the caudate, you know, really close together in the middle of the brain, are both involved in motor control and this learning, where the, the pudiment is primarily responsible for motor execution, procedural learning, and reward processing, whereas the caudate is more involved in this motor planning, cognitive flexibility, and the working memory with associated learning. But what I will say is we spoke about the thalamus earlier, and, you know, the thalamus is something that is the relay station between the brain and really the spinal cord and everything else. It tells what to go where, and, 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 and because if it doesn't, things, don't, things get missed, and, and we hurt ourselves, or things don't happen, involuntary or voluntary. So the, the brain here that we show, the cortex, controls almost everything, almost. Not, not everything, almost everything in the body. And the, the, the thalamus, you know, is, is the part of the body that if it's not connected, if the pudiment and quality aren't talking to it correctly, we, you must say we speak about not connecting to the spinal cord and the rest of the body, you know, it's, it's, it's like a misfire in an engine. It doesn't work very well and it only gets worse. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you. Love you to death. If you enjoyed it, please like it, subscribe. But most of all, if you, th if you think it's worthwhile, please share it with, with anyone you want to. Sharing is everything. It's getting the word out for MSA. And that's what we need in this. We, we, need, we need notoriety. We need attention. We need publicity. I love you guys to death. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.